In this video, I'm going to explain how we can use an RC snub network like this to reduce transient voltages across switches to acceptable levels. This is commonly done to protect switches and relays from voltage spikes when a switch is open like this one here. And it's needed when the circuit contains an inductive load, such as a solenoid like this one here. Later on in the video, I will show you how we can calculate appropriate values for the snubber, resistor and capacitor. Let's first look at this basic circuit that contains a switch here with no snubber protection. The circuit includes a voltage source in the form of this battery, a coil and a resistor to limit the DC current flowing through this coil. When the switch is opened, the flow of current will be interrupted and the coil will increase the voltage across this switch here to keep the current flowing. The transient voltage, as it's known, can be much higher than the source voltage of say 12 volts and could lead to sparking and premature failure of this switch. So if we run this simulation, you'll see at the moment, as you would expect, no flow of current. And when I then uh, close the switch, then we have the current flow. And when I open the switch, we don't. Nothing surprising there. Now let's have a voltage probe here and let's um, if you have a look you'll see that the voltage is currently running at 12 volts it's an open circuit here we've got the open switch so you would expect the supply voltage at 12 volts and then when you close the switch I'm sure you would expect it that the voltage is going to go down to zero like that okay but the more surprising thing is that when we open that switch the, because we've got an inductor, the inductor is going to, well, the inductor has energy stored in it, and it's going to raise the voltage across the switch, that's known as the transient voltage, to try to keep the current flowing. And that voltage could be very high, it could be kilovolts even, and it could have sparking. Now, this simulation software won't actually show sparking, but we will hopefully see some high voltages. And I open the switch. You see the voltage shot up, and in fact, I think we're going to have to fit to data. And yeah, now it's changed to kilovolts to scale, so it's about uh, five and a half kilovolts. So yes, that is rather high, isn't it, when we've only got a, a 12 volt battery. And so we could close that and open again. And you see each time we get some sparks because of the inductor. Now, if this wasn't an inductive load, if it was just resistive, we wouldn't have this problem. An RC snubber network like this one can be used to absorb the energy stored in the inductor and therefore limit the voltage rise across this switch to an acceptable level. For example, if the switch had a maximum rating of 100 volts DC, then we might wish to limit the transient voltage to a lower level, like 50 volts DC. This would give us a good safety margin. Now, it's quite easy for us to do the calculations of what resistor and what capacitor to use that will actually limit that transient voltage. But before we do that, I just want to show you the circuit in action. And you'll see at the moment, no surprise, the switch is open, so we've got the supply voltage across the switch, 12 volts. Now let's close the switch so it drops down to zero, as you would expect. Now this was the thing, wasn't it, that we've got the current flowing through the inductor and therefore there's going to be energy in that inductor and then when we open the switch normally what would happen is the voltage the transient voltage will rise to keep that current flowing but we have um, or will have that transient voltage capped to approximately 50 volts because i've chosen appropriate values for r and c so let's see what happens so we're looking over here somewhere and hopefully you can see that um, it's now running at 12 volts, but it peaked. There was a voltage spike, uh, approximately 50 volts. OK, so what was previously maybe kilovolts has now been capped to 50 volts. And we don't have to limit it to 50 volts. I could have gone for a much lower value as well. So um, hopefully you can see the uh, merits in doing this. And in fact, just before we stop this part of the simulation, let's just view the current. So now they'll our capacitor is charged up, close the switch, that capacitor can discharge, current can flow normally, so it has no effect. This 
RC Snubber Network has no effect when the switch is closed. But then when we open, it can absorb the energy. OK, it can absorb that charge. So in the remainder of the video, I'll show you how we can calculate appropriate values for the RC Snubber Network. OK, here's our same circuit printed off on paper, but I have chosen or I have specified this time a value for this resistor. Remember, this resistor is going to limit the current through the coil and also a coil inductance as well of 500 millihenries. Now, the first thing that uh, we could do is to calculate the current that's going to flow both through this resistor and through the coil. And that current is going to be quite important because also later on when we open the switch, that same current is going to flow here. Now, I've deliberately chosen quite simple values. So we've got 12 volts and we've got 10 ohms. So the current is going to be V over R, which of course is going to be 12 divided by 10, which is 1.2 amps. So we're going to have 1.2 amps flowing down there. And later on also, we will have uh, 1.2 amps going here as well, albeit momentarily. Now, the next thing then, we need to calculate how much energy can be stored in this coil. And the formula for that is going to be energy, which is measured in joules, is going to be equal to half the inductance, L, the current, I squared. And so let's do that. So 0 0.5 times inductance, so 500 times 10 to the minus 3 times the current, which is 1.2 amps squared. So uh, 0 0.5 times 500 times 10 to the minus 3 times 1.2 squared gives us 0 0.36 joules. So that's the energy stored in this coil. The next thing then that we can do is to uh, calculate the value of this capacitor. Now the formula that we want there is going to be the energy stored or will be stored in the capacitor is going to be the capacitance times the voltage squared divided by 2. Now this voltage is going to be the maximum voltage that we want the capacitor to be charged to and we need to decide on a value there. So what's that maximum voltage that we want? I mentioned earlier in the video saying that say if this switch was rated at 100 volts DC just to be very very safe we might want the transient voltage to rise no more than say half of that so let's let's go for that value still so 50 volts that's going to be the maximum voltage that's also going to be the maximum voltage on the capacitor okay so um, we say the energy remember the energy was 0.36 joules so 0.36 equals the capacitance which we uh, don't know the voltage squared which we do know so that's uh, 50 squared divided by 2 so uh, what are we going to do next then well we multiply this side by 2 and then we've got to multiply that side. So 0 0.36 times 2 is going to equal the capacitance times 50 squared. And of course I want to get rid of this 50 squared. So 0 0.36 times 2 divided by 50 squared is going to be equal to the capacitance. And so let's do that. So 0 0.36 times 2 over 50 squared equals 2.88 times 10 to the minus 4. I'm going to click the engineering units there. So that's going to give us uh, 288 times 10 to the minus 6. So that is microfarads of capacitance. So that is now 288 microfarads. And last but not least, I want to calculate this here. So we can use Ohm's law for that. So the resistance is going to equal 
the voltage over the current. We know the current, which is 1.2 amps. We know the voltage, which is 50 volts. So 50 divided by 1.2, 50 divided by 1.2 equals 41 point, let's round it to 7 ohms. Okay, so 41.7 ohms. Now these values are the very same values that I used in my simulation that I showed you earlier and they uh, were shown in the simulation to limit the transient voltage spike to 50 volts. And I've uh, also experimented with this up circuit using different values, different inductance, different resistance here, uh, different desirable uh, voltages and you should do the same as well. So let's say you might be happy with that going to say 24 volts or 100 volts or whatever. So, But you can use this same uh, scheme of calculations to do the calculations for your RC snubber network. So hopefully that video is useful and if you've got any questions uh, why don't you post a comment. Maybe I can answer the question or maybe someone else who's also watching the video can. Okay, that's it.